So NADN 2.0 was officially dropped and it's gonna be absolutely game-changing. Or is it? If you're anything like me, you've seen all of these posts emerging online talking about how NADN 2.0 is gonna be revolutionary. The user interface is gonna be completely different. They're gonna be releasing all these bug fixes and features that we've been waiting for for years. And unfortunately, that is not the case as of December, 2025. The reality is, is that the vast majority of you are not actually gonna notice any change whatsoever in this technology because the whole point of NADN 2.0 is to improve the underlying performance, speed, and security. So this change is really more about the existing infrastructure that NADN is built off of so that it has a platform to grow really quickly. Now, we're gonna be going over four updates that NADN 2.0 brings, and we're also gonna be talking about how you can implement this into your account because there is one thing that you will need to consider before migrating your data from version one to version two. Let's get into this right now. So the first category is the user interface, and it looks incredibly similar. However, there is one difference that I wanna bring up here, which is they have launched a search bar. So now you can start searching through all of your recent files. You can start searching through your workflows, projects, credentials, data tables, executions, navigation, and absolutely everything else. In addition to the search bar, they also will be rolling out an auto save feature. However, that's not gonna be in December. That's gonna be in January moving forward so that if you ever get to the point where you forget to save your NADN workflow, because let's be honest, like everyone's been there before, um, it's gonna go ahead and save that for you. However, that's in January moving forward. Moving on to the next category here, we're gonna talk about bug fixes. Now, the issue that NADN 2.0 solves, at least the major issue, is how parent workflows communicate with child workflows. So you have a main workflow here or a parent workflow that sends data to a sub workflow or a child workflow. And the specific bug fix that they solved was that in sub workflows or child workflows, if you have a wait step for over 60 seconds, it actually causes a bug where you don't receive back the data from the sub workflow. And so if we open up this node in the parent workflow, we get no data back it's empty. And so they've gone ahead and solved that so that if you were dealing with a sub workflow with a wait step of over 60 seconds, it will return the data that you're expecting over here. So we got test and test. And if we go into the sub workflow here and look at the last node over here, it delivers test and test. So we are getting the data back, even if there's a wait step of over 60 seconds. Now, the next category that I'd like to go over here is all about performance. And we're going to be talking about two things in this category. Specifically, they're going to be removing SQLite legacy driver. Now, what they found is that there was reliability issues with this and they're actually updating this driver to the pooled driver. Now what they're saying is the underlying infrastructure database that was actually powering NADN is switching. And the reason why they're switching that is because their benchmarks show that it can be up to 10 times faster. So anytime you're using NADN 2.0 now, it's just going to be way faster to do literally anything. If you want to add in apps, it's going to be faster. If you want to change things, all of everything like it's all just going to be sped up significantly and the second thing we're going to talk about in performance is the fact that when we're dealing with large file sizes the performance is significantly better so what i did here was i uploaded a i had a form submission here and i uploaded a 137 megabyte file okay this video file over here there was no problem being able to upload this on nadn 2.0 it received the data it's totally good to go but when we try to do the same thing on on NADN version one, what happens, and let me just go ahead and upload this 137 megabyte file here, is that it's going to encounter an error. And so the reason why this is the case is that they've actually gone ahead and they've removed in-memory binary data mode. Man, that sounds like a mouthful. But anyways, essentially what they're saying is that when you're dealing with NADN workflows, previously all these large files were stored in this actual execution of the workflow. And so if you had tons of data, it would overwhelm the memory and it could crash. And so now what they're going to be doing is having binary data being stored in a file system, database, or S3. So it's just going to improve the performance. If we head back over here, we can see that on version one of NADN, there's a problem submitting a response. And so it cannot process the 137 megabytes.
megabyte file, whereas with NADN 2.0, it has no problem doing that. And the last category is security. And there's a lot to cover here. I'm just gonna be going over three major things. If you wanna read more about this, I'll link down below in the description to the docs talking about all the security updates. But essentially the first one has to do with authentication. So anytime you're authenticating apps, there's a security vulnerability when you're connecting these in and that has since been fixed. And the other two particular security updates have to do with the code block inside NADN. Now this gets a bit technical and I'd imagine most people don't use this feature, but essentially there is something called environmental variables inside NADN. This is how you can safely and securely pass passwords or private like credentials or whatever inside NADN and there was a security vulnerability there as well. They've since patched that up and what they've also done is they've rolled out something called task runners and what this does is NADN will enable task runners by default to improve security and isolation. So essentially what they're doing with this code block is they're going to run it in isolation. So instead of it being part of the whole workflow, if something happens, it's not going to crash the whole workflow. It's just going to crash this instance of the run. So they're actually separating it out. And of course, in order to get this set up on your instance of NADN, what you want to do is head over to the admin panel over here. It's the cloud icon. And inside the admin panel, we'll head over to manage our account. We'll choose the most recent version of NADN, and then we'll click save. Now, just keep in mind that today you'll only have access to the unstable version of NADN. And on the 15th of December, you'll have access to the stable version of NADN version 2.0. It'll take a couple minutes for this to load and you'll be good to go. But just before you do that, you'll probably want to head over to the settings tab over here and go over to the migration report because when you migrate your workflows from NADN version one to NADN version two, there might be a couple breaks because the underlying infrastructure is changing. And if there is any issues, it will go ahead and list them in this report right over here. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you found value in it. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe button down below. And if you're looking to learn more about NADN and then either create your own business and automate that business or sell AI automation services to business owners, then I highly recommend taking a look at my school community. There's two transformations here. Number one is to find close and fulfill deals within 30 days and less if you're looking to you know sell automations to other people and then the other transformation is for existing business owners that want to automate up to 80 percent of their business in under two months i'll give you the exact blueprints that have worked for me allowed me to scale to seven figures so that you can copy paste and deploy them into your own business and of course if you want a done for you solution where our team takes care of everything for you i'd highly recommend taking a look at my AI automation agency where we help build these systems out for you without you having to do anything yourself. Thanks guys for watching. Have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next one.